Hey what's up guys this is Vimal here and welcome back to TR HD. Today I have a new smartphone to show you on my desk. This is the cheapest smartphone that comes with a notch. Yes you heard me right, it's got that notch just like the iPhone 10 and is relatively very cheap compared to the other phones that come with a notch. This phone is made by Ocutel and the model is U18. It came in this bubble wrap packaging. Let me take it out. So here's the box packing of the phone. It's a simple white box, you've got the Ocutel branding and the model number at the bottom right corner. Let's check out what's at the back side. It comes in lot of colors. I've got the black color model. You've got some features of the phone here. It's got a 5.85 inch display with a notch, runs on Android 7.0 and has the following sensors. So that was about the box packing. There's nothing else written on it. Let's get started with the unboxing. Let me grab my knife and cut this tape over here. I want to thank Fastech for sending me this product for review purpose. All right, let's open it. On opening the box, we've got the Ocutel U18 smartphone at the top. It comes in this simple packing. Let me take it out of this cover. So here it is, the Ocutel U18. Nice, I've got the black color model. It looks a bit thick to me. Maybe that's because of the case. Okay, we'll check out the phone in a moment. First, let's see what else do we have in the box. You get a user manual and a warranty card. Make sure to read them for all the info on the product. There's also a SIM ejection tool, a USB Type-C cable for charging and data transfer, a Type-C to 3.5mm headphone adapter as there is no 3.5mm headphone socket on this phone and a 5V 2A power adapter. So these are all the items we got in the package. Now let's check out the Ocutel U18 smartphone. Looks like the phone comes with a free case and also a screen guard is pre-installed on it. That is very nice of the company. Let me take out the case and show you. It's a transparent silicone case, looks of good quality. Now let's check out the phone. You've got some info written on the sticker. It has a 5.5 inch HD plus IPS display. It's a 4G dual SIM smartphone, has 4GB RAM and 64GB ROM, has a 16 megapixel dual rear camera, has a massive 4000mAh battery and an octa-core processor. It's not quad-core guys, must be a printing mistake. It has an MTK6750 CPU which is an octa-core processor. Alright, let's remove the sticker. So this is how the phone looks like, very clean from the front. Let's check out the back side. Let me also peel the sticker here. There you go. Now let's talk about the phone's design. On the front, it's got a 5.85 inch HD plus 21 is to 9 IPS display with a notch. At the top, you've got the earpiece, a 13 megapixel camera and few sensors over here. There's nothing else on the front. Now let's check out the back side. The back has a two-tone design. The camera part has a nice textured finish and the remaining else is smooth plastic. You've got the Ocutel logo at the bottom. The fingerprint sensor is placed below the cameras. You can easily reach it. Now let me show you the cameras. It's got a dual camera setup. One is a 16 megapixel camera and the other one is a 5 megapixel camera. And beside that, there's a dual tone LED flash. On the right side, we've got a power button and a volume rocker about that. The quality of the buttons is nice. They feel tactile and clicky. There's nothing at the top. On the left side, you've got a hybrid SIM card slot. It's a 4G dual SIM phone and supports nano type SIM cards. At the bottom, you've got a microphone, a speaker and a USB type C port. So that was our overview on the design on this phone. The build quality of the phone is good, but it's a bit thick and heavy, must be due to that 4000mAh battery. And it weighs about 213 grams. Okay, let's power on the phone and see if it's got some juice in it. By the time it boots up, let's go through the specs. It has a 5.85 inch HD plus 21 is to 9 IPS display, a MediaTek 6750 octa-core CPU, has 4GB RAM, 64GB internal storage, 16 plus 5 megapixel dual camera setup at the back and a 13 megapixel camera on the front. It also has face unlock and a 4000mAh battery. So the phone has finally booted up and I've also gone through the setup process. Now let me tell you about the comfort and the handling. The phone has an ideal size and feels comfortable to hold in the hand. All the buttons are easily accessible and the fingerprint scanner is also placed in a good position. I've set up the fingerprint reader, let's see how it performs. The fingerprint scanner was accurate and unlocks the phone almost all the time, but it was not that super fast. There's a slight delay as you can see in the video. Also the Ocutel U18 has face unlock on it. The face unlock was working well in bright light conditions, but was struggling a bit during low light. Now let me show you the display. It's got this notch at the top that looks very similar to that on the iPhone 10. The bezels are also quite thin, considering that it's only a budget phone. 
And to access the notifications panel, you need to swipe down from either of the corners. You can't access it from the notch area. Just like this. Coming to the software and the interface, this phone has a custom Ocutel launcher. You can access the app drawer with this button. And swiping right from the home screen brings up Google Now. The UI feels smooth, I haven't faced any issues till now. Let me show you the notifications panel. Looks very similar to stock Android. Let's head over to the settings. The settings app also looks the same. In the display settings, you got the adaptive brightness and the navbar settings. Here you can swap the position of the buttons. Let's see how much storage is available on it. The U18 has 64GB of internal storage. I've already installed a few apps and games on it and still left with 49GB of free space. Out of the box, you get about 51-52GB to 52 GB of usable space. Now let's check out the about phone. The Ocutel U18 runs on Android 7.0 Nougat. Here's the easter egg. And the security patch it's running is January 2018. So that was about the settings app. Now let's check out the display quality. It has a 5.85 inch HD plus IPS panel. The display quality was good. The colors were vibrant, the white balance was perfect, but the blacks were in jet black. And also the resolution is only 1512 by 720. So it's not super sharp, but that's all right. You won't be able to make out that easily. Also, while watching photos or videos, the notch doesn't interfere. You'll just get a black stripe in that area. The viewing angles were also good. Now let's check out the speaker quality. Let's play music and see how it sounds like. It has a single down firing speaker and the audio quality was good. It was loud and clear and the distortion was also less even at max volume. Coming to the benchmarks, I've installed Antutu on it and ran benchmarks. It got a score of about 44,480 which was an average score. But nothing to worry, if you are using it for normal tasks like browsing the web, watching media, it will perform well. I'll also show you the gaming performance in a moment. But before that, let's check out the Geekbench 4 scores. It got a single core score of 615 and a multi core score of 1839. And these are the list of available sensors on it. Now let's check out the gaming performance. Let's start off with Asphalt 8. I'm playing the game at max graphics settings. The gaming performance was good, it was handling Asphalt 8 very smoothly, there were very minimum lags or stutters, I've also played MC5 on it and the gameplay experience was smooth, but I'm not sure if that MTK6750 can handle other graphic intensive games that smoothly. Now let's talk about the camera. This is how the camera interface looks like. Let's take a photo and see how fast the shutter is. Okay, that was fast. It shoots photos in 16 megapixel resolution and has different modes like photo, video, face beauty, blur and monochrome. And it can shoot videos in 1080p resolution. Now let me show you a few photo samples that I shot on this camera. The photo quality was really good for the price. It has a Sony IMX135 sensor and shoots photos in 16 megapixel resolution. The detail in the photos was nice, the colors looked punchy and vibrant, the white balance was perfect and the dynamic range was also good for a budget phone. I was quite impressed by the quality. And it was also producing nice bouquets in the photos. It also has portrait mode on it but the edge detection was not that good. What it was actually doing is, it was keeping the central area sharp and blurring out the remaining part in the photo. These are a few samples shot on the front facing camera. Coming to the battery life, the battery life was good. On an average, I was getting around 5-6 to six minutes of screen on time with my kind of usage, which includes watching YouTube, using social media apps and slight gaming. I could easily get about a day to day and a half battery life with that kind of usage and charging the phone from 0 to 100 took about 3 to 3 and a half hours. So that was my review on the Ocutel U18, the cheapest smartphone with a notch. It's a good smartphone, the build quality is nice, the performance is good and the camera quality was also decent. The only thing I didn't like is the phone was a bit bulky and also if it had a full HD display, it would have been awesome. Other than that, everything else was fine. 
It costs about 11,000 rupees. I'll just leave a link to that in the description box below. You can check it out there. So that was it for today. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more new awesome videos. And I'll see you in the next one.